I will talk about the number one finding in any penetration test and one of the easiest way for an attacker to compromise your whole network. It is like giving an attacker a priority pass or the keys to the kingdom, saving him both time and effort. Did you guess what I'm talking about? It is the nightmare for any security professional to have a Windows service running under the domain administrator account. In almost every organization, there is a service running under the domain admin account or at least other highly privileged account. This is usually your backup service that needs to backup all the files including SQL databases, exchange services, and Active Directory. You know, I work in big organizations and I always hear the backup team saying we need to run the backup shop under the domain admin account to backup the Active Directory. But a better way is to run a scheduled task in one of your domain controllers and that scheduled task will be running under the local system and it invokes a PowerShell script. Now that PowerShell script will take a backup of your Active Directory and copy the backup files to a remote secure file share where your backup software can then go and take backup of these files without the need to expose your domain admin account. Another examples and scenarios where the domain admin is used to run services is when you are running security tools that connects to all your workstation and servers perhaps to scan for vulnerabilities. These tools usually require admin rights on all machines. What would be the easiest thing to do? Well, let's use the domain admin account. Now, a better advice and practice is to use group policies and configure a dedicated account to be member of the local admin group on all machine and using that dedicated account for your security scanning tool. I also see people tending to use the domain admin account for almost everything because it's easier that way. You don't need to think about what permissions to give or finding yourself facing error messages related to insufficient rights. So why not to use the domain admin account for everything? Now the domain admin should only be used when you log into your domain controllers and troubleshooting or doing some active directory stuff, nothing else. Now let me show you the risk of running a domain admin under a service account. If an attacker gain access for example to a Windows machine and the domain admin account was used to run a Windows service, then in this demo I will show you how easy it is to reveal the password of the domain admin account in clear text. This is clear text and not the hash of the password even. Believe me when I say that the first thing attackers will do is to search for services running under the domain admin account and once they find one, it's game over. So let us dive into the demo and see how this works from the attacker perspective. I'm logging into one of my servers and let me open the services console. You can see I have a service running under the domain admin account. If I open the service properties, you can see under the logon tab, the domain admin is used to run this service indeed, which is a bad thing for your security team and a good thing for an attacker. Now the attacker wants to reveal the password of the domain admin account by hacking into the service by using a tool called SEPD or Service Account Password Dumper. The attempt failed as you can see. Let me try to open a common prompt using the local system account which I can easily do by using a famous tool called PSExec written by the famous Mark Rozanovich, the CTO of Azure. Now I have a command prompt and I'm impersonating the local system account on this machine which is the most powerful account on this machine. Now if I browse to my tools folder and run the same tool which is SAPD or service account password dumper tool and provide the service name, guess what I can see now? You are right, I can see the password of the domain admin account in clear text, not the password hash the actual password in clear text, as you can see here. When you run a service under a service account, Windows stores the password in a secure location in the registry so that the service can still run if the machine is disconnected from the network. Mission accomplished. You can see how easy it is to reveal the password of service account if you are the administrator on Windows. 
The password of a service account is stored locally in a secure location in the registry so that if the machine is offline or disconnected from the network, the service can still keep running. Here is my challenge for you. Go to your Windows machine and try to locate one of your services running under a privileged service account. Try to reveal the password of the service account and share your result and feedback in the comments below. I know that all this sounds scary. And by now, you should carefully consider what accounts you use to run your services. As a rule, you should never, ever use the domain admin account to run any Windows service, and there is no exception whatsoever for doing this. What about best practices that you should consider when planning your service accounts? The best way to handle service accounts is to use managed service accounts. They are available to you since Windows Server 2008 R2, and the passwords for such accounts are managed by your domain controllers. There is also another variation of managed service accounts called group managed service accounts that allow you to use the same managed service account across multiple machines. Think of an IIS pool account that is shared across many front-end nodes. The next thing you should consider is to give service accounts just enough privileges to carry on their purpose, nothing more and nothing less. And remember, once an attacker hacks into a machine, every account used on that box should be considered compromised, including service accounts. Now, during the demo, I used many tools and talked about a lot of technologies, so make sure to check these links for more information.